5 p.m. recap. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Today is Monday, December 14, 2020. BBC report. South Korea balloons, sold to ban people sending cross-border messages. Activists would tie the leaflets to balloons and float them over the border for North Korean residents to find. The new law, which takes effect in three months, also stops campaigners sending money, goods and USB drives containing news and information. Rights activists have said the law is a violation of freedom of speech. A bill was introduced in June after Kim Yo-jong, sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, said balloon senders were human scum. CNN report. This writer found an old typewriter and rekindled a traditional way of easing isolation just in time for the holidays. When New Yorker staff writer Rachel Syme bought an old school typewriter, she thought it might be fun to send friends and family letters they could hold in their hands. When she saw how her old-fashioned letters lifted modern spirits weary of pandemic isolation, she launched Penpalooza. By harnessing the power of snail mail, Penpalooza breaks past the ephemeral and terse world of social media to reintroduce the time-honored idea of pen pals. Deutsche Well Report. Life of British PM Tony Blair set to become rock opera. An opera whose subject is former UK Labour Prime Minister Tony Blair is to open next year in London, with the late Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein and Princess Diana also among the stage characters. The work, entitled Tony, a Tony Blair rock opera, has a libretto by comedian Harry Hill and music by Steve Brown. It is to be performed as part of a theatre festival at the Turbine Theatre next to the historic Battersea Power Station from February 4 to 6. BBC Report Nigeria's Katsina School Abduction, How I Escaped My Kidnappers The 17-year-old student, whose name we can't reveal, was abducted alongside more than 500 others from Government Science Secondary School in the northwestern Katsina state on Friday night. We were being pushed and beaten, we spent the night marching, sometimes walking on thorns. Thirty minutes before dawn we were told to sleep, he told BBC Hausa. He said that while the group was resting, he found a tree under which he sat down. CNN report. Cleveland MLB team to drop Indians from its name. The Major League Baseball team in Cleveland, Ohio, will drop Indians from its name. According to a report from the New York Times and later confirmed by other news outlets, the team declined to comment on the situation, but said it did not dispute the Times report, which cites sources familiar with the decision. Major League Baseball has not responded to CNN's request for comment. The decision to change the team name could be announced as soon as this week. The Times reported. CNN report. A gunman is dead after a shooting at a New York City cathedral. A gunman who opened fire on the steps of a New York City cathedral on Sunday moments after an outdoor Christmas concert ended was shot and killed by responding police officers, authorities said. A choir that had just finished Christmas caroling at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine was lingering atop the cathedral steps when the suspect, who had two handguns, approached the church doors and opened fire into the air, police said. CNN report. Black Lives Matter demonstrators rescue is this year's most inspiring moment. While 2020 may go down in history as a year that many people would prefer to forget, CNN Heroes viewers took time to weigh in on the top moments worth remembering. CNN Heroes, an all-star tribute will be available on HBO Max starting Thursday, December 17th. Current HBO subscribers may have free access to HBO Max and should visit hbomax.com for more information. Voting for this year's most inspiring moment is now closed. Fox report. Portland community searched for serial stalker amid police inaction, delays. A serial stalker, who allegedly terrorized a Portland neighborhood is believed to have been found following a community-led effort after residents said police were slow to respond to calls for help if they answered them at all, according to a podcast that aired Monday. A community of residents from the North Tabor and Rose City Park neighborhoods banded together in search of the man who is said to have harassed at least 11 locals, terrorizing them through the windows of their homes and, in one instance, even breaking in and trying to touch a 13-year-old girl while she was lying in bed, the Oregonian Oregon Live recently reported. Fox Report Kamala Harris calls to honor Sandy Hook victims with gun reforms. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris called for gun reforms to honor the victims of the Sandy Hook Elementary School mass shooting on Monday, 
which marked the eighth anniversary of the tragedy that took the lives of more than two dozen people, including 21st graders. Harris marked the occasion in a tweet that was accompanied by pictures of the victims. Today marks eight years since 21st graders and six educators were murdered at Sandy Hook Elementary School, she wrote. Deutsche Well report. U.S. sanctions Turkey over purchase of Russian air defense system. The United States on Monday sanctioned Turkey's military procurement agency and senior officials linked with it in protest at Ankara's purchase of the Russian S-400 missile defense system. American officials have long warned that the S-400 is incompatible with NATO equipment and poses a threat to the U.S. military. The United States made clear to Turkey at the highest levels and on numerous occasions that its purchase of the S-400 system would endanger the security of U.S. military technology and personnel and provide substantial funds to Russia's defense sector, as well as Russian access to the Turkish armed forces and defense industry, said Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in a statement. Fox Report U.S. blames Iran for presumed death of Robert Levinson, sanctions two intelligence officers, the Trump administration for the first time on Monday formally blamed Iran for the presumed death of retired FBI agent Robert Levinson, publicly identifying two Iranian intelligence officers believed responsible for his abduction and imposing sanctions against them. Levinson disappeared in Iran under mysterious circumstances more than a decade ago, and though U.S. diplomats and investigators have long said they thought he was taken by Iranian government agents, Monday's announcement in the final weeks of the Trump administration was the most definitive assignment of blame to date. BBC report. Alexei Navalny. Report names. Russian agents. In poisoning case. In August Mr. Navalny, a staunch critic of President Vladimir Putin, was poisoned with the nerve agent Novichuk. He has accused Mr. Putin of ordering the attack, something the Kremlin denies. But investigative journalists at Bellingcat and Russian news site The Insider have now published a report implicating FSB agents in the incident. It identifies three men who traveled with the opposition figure to Tomsk, where he was eventually poisoned, and also reveals phone and travel data that, strongly suggests the August poisoning attempt on Navalny's life was mandated at the highest echelons of the Kremlin. Deutsche Well report. EU's rights agency warns on AI threat to rights. More attention should be paid to the possible negative effects on people's fundamental rights of technologies based on artificial intelligence, the EU's rights agency said in a report issued on Monday. AI is not infallible. It is made by people, and humans can make mistakes, said Michael O'Flaherty, director of the Fundamental Rights Agency, FRA, in comments cited on the agency's website. The FRA report, entitled Getting the Future Right, Artificial Intelligence and Fundamental Rights in the EU, identifies areas where it feels the bloc must create safeguards and mechanisms for holding businesses and public administrations accountable in their use of AI. Fox report. ISIS sleeper cell attacks in Syria reach record low, data shows. Despite the still frequent terrorist attacks ripping through the once ISIS-controlled pockets of northeastern Syria, data released this month showed that November 2020 recorded the lowest number of sleeper cell attacks by the Islamic terror group since their territorial defeat last year. According to the Syria-based monitoring group Rojava Information Center RJC, there were 16 confirmed attacks, plus an additional seven attacks at the sprawling Al Hole displaced person camp, making it an 80% decrease year over year. Thank you for watching 5 p.m. recap. To be notified, you can subscribe our channel and activate the bell.